Um, thanks for the introduction, Steve, and thanks very much for the Graham Centre for um, inviting me here to talk today. Um, and hopefully what I've got to um, talk about might sort of dovetail into a little bit of what uh, Rebecca was talking about and also some of those other seasoned campaigners in the speaking trail, which I'm not. So we'll stumble through this and we'll see how we go. So um, first of all, I suppose, what I'll be talking about is just um, how cattle sort of see the world, <coughs> perceive the world, and then how we try and design stuff to sort of work with those attributes. So here we go. So maximising stock flow, and I'll try not to just read all this, but so we'll go. So in order to design and operate good cattle yards, it's important to have a good knowledge, uh, basic knowledge of how cattle behave. So by taking advantage of these sort of natural behaviour um, of livestock, we can design yards and handling facilities that work in our favour. So the big key here is always let the stock think they're escaping. So if you can do that, you're halfway there. Um, and make use of their sort of circling and milling behaviour throughout the yards and when you're moving them. Uh, don't make stock uh, run towards, you know, threatening and foreign things. So we'll, we'll touch on that as we go through. Avoid dead ends, which comes back to that escape. Thing. Mobbing behaviour. Cattle find uh, safety within a, with a group when frightened and will mob together. They'll, um, when separated from the mob, you'll know a, a solo beast will want to return to the mob irrespective of where, where the handler is um, situated, uh, such as that sort of instinct to get back you know, towards their mates. Uh, the natural circling instinct is thought to be associated with uh, keeping a sort of visual eye contact on their, on their mates but also maybe keeping a, a bit of a visual eye contact on the wolves or the predators that, um, that might be out to eat them. So just going through a bit of a vision analysis and, and um, how cattle see. So the latest <coughs> research um, in the colour vision of cattle is that they're dichromats with colour sensitive cells and they see um, sort of yellowish green and blue and purple type colours that don't have the quite the broad spectrum that um, we as humans have. Part of that vision makes the, the animal sort of more sensitive to seeing sudden movement um, and these sort of animals um, have excellent distance vision but relatively sort of weak eye muscles to sort of see things close up. So moving on with depth perception, because of the location of the eyes, cattle have poor, poor depth perception so that's why you'll sort of, um, they've got a, uh, quite a wide blind spot beneath them uh, and you'll see why they sort of look down and sort of observe things on the ground. Um, this is a bit of video. And you'll see um, cattle being let out of the lane. And you see, you've seen it all before, but they stop and crop and look at that great this machine's not running really as smoothly as it could be, but they, yeah, you see as they come out, you've seen it all the time, but they don't know what that grade is, it's foreign to them, they don't know if they're going to trip over it, fall in it, you know, if it's raised or, or if there's nothing there. Um, grazing animals um, are relatively defenceless, so must, um, you know, be vigilant against predators. It's thought that they can see sort of movement up to 500 metres away. Um, and obviously they've got a wide range of um, vision and a blind spot behind them. Um, change in colour and lighting will often spook cattle when, when, uh, and make it more difficult to move mobs. Um, yeah, we've seen that before. Advancing stock uh, must be able to see the others, uh, must not be able to see the others sort of behind them, certainly in a single file race where, where you're trying to, um, you're sheeting, stop that sort of, uh, that vision behind them to help encourage them to move forward and stop those distractions a little bit like maybe blinkers on a trotter or a galloper just um, light up ahead can be helped to sort of draw them. Um, following livestock must be able to see the other cattle ahead even if it's disappearing around the corner. Um, it's good to sort of use corners but initially 
they need to be able to see a couple of body lengths up a single file race before anything disappears. A, because if it's too sharp in that initial sort of curve, it'll look like a dead end. And B, if there's a little bit of a pause between cattle going into that single file race, um, the other one disappears too fast. Obviously livestock flow better through yards uh, if the same paths are followed. And that comes down to them knowing they've got to go through the system you know, to, to escape and get back to the paddock. Um, probably further on what uh, Rebecca was sort of saying a little bit before. but um, So if you're coming up behind them, obviously can't see you, they'll turn around and face you. Um, so if you get stand directly in front of them, that sort of instinct of um, fright or flight will sort of come into play, so they'll either go through you or move around you. If you sneak up beside them, you're sort of in the blind spot there, but if you come around, you can make make the, the beast move. We all, I'll just go back one, but the point of balance, which is, <coughs> uh, the point of balance, which is actually, you'll know, and camp drafters and everything, body who moves stock knows probably more up here, but not, not there, but, you know, sort of in front of that point, the beast will move back, and behind that point, the beast will move forward. So, um, which I haven't got a slide for, but just going back to Rebecca's flight zone, um, uh, like a dairy cow might have a, a flight zone of a metre away, because they're so used to people, but um, cattle that haven't been handled much at all might be, you know, way off here sort of thing, you know, just that sort of distance away from the beast to be able to sort of make it move. There it goes, makes it move off. Um, just, uh, like just a couple of theories here, just pushing cattle up a race. Um, cattle will walk forward faster than they walk back, so the theory of sort of making cattle move if they're not drawing, I suppose, is that you get um, past the point of balance there, and then the cattle will move up a bit like a dog working a sheep race. That's the same sort of theory, just with a curb race. Um, the operator doesn't have as much, uh, doesn't have to walk as far. Good and bad design, just a few principles here. We're just sort of showing you the cow flowing around the outside of the race there. What we're trying to do is get that streamlined flow. And if you can imagine sort of water running around the outside of the force and into the into the race, that's probably not a bad bad way to think about it. This is a different sort of a setup where the cattle flow around and bang into the wall there. So in this in this situation, the, the, the mouth or the neck to the single file race would have been better going straight up instead of going around the corner. Um, we've got sort of uh, too sharp a design. Uh, bruising problems, you know, with this corner there, and um, not the best. Next. Um, this is a bit of video about sort of rotary force. Oh, I just, uh, I just don't need that. <laughs> right, that's not a video of the rotary force. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pity. Anyway, the <coughs> I don't think it's going to like those. Um, just try it once more. No. So what's that? That was showing you um, cattle sort of flying through a rotary force and then into a into a race. But the big thing is with sort of rotary forces um, is or any force is to consider it as a sort of a through yard. Um, there's no point in sort of shoving all the cattle into the forcing yard if the sliding gate going into your single file race is shut. They'll go in there, where's the escape route? So you, you're much better off to have the system all open and uh, let them go then. So even if the race is smaller than the, the volume that's in the forcing yard, at least that they seen that there is an escape route there if the sliding gate shut off after the after the initial sort of race is filled. Um, well designed stock yards make your livestock operation more profitable and for the following reasons. 
kind of propaganda, I suppose. <coughs> Good yards um, encourage timely husbandry and uh, more likely to, to um, do the job, more likely to monitor your, your, your cattle, uh, more likely to make decisions, get the poorer performers off, um, get the weights right, you know, for different specs for, for um, processes, all that sort of thing. Uh, good yards make more intensive husbandry viable. <coughs> it also probably allows you to go into different markets where if you've got bad facilities that you might want, not want to get in or you know, take an opportunity of some cattle that have come up from north, uh, you know, northern Australia which might be a bit crankier but you wouldn't go into them because your facilities aren't good enough or going into a, a fattening operation or, or going into a breeding operation or whatever. <coughs> Uh, less stress and bruising on livestock, which um, we know about. Uh, less chance of injury to to operators. So, um, so if you understand how stock behaves, and we uh, design yards to utilise this sort of natural behaviour, then uh, then maximising stock flow will improve all these sort of things. Um, and combined with sort of your, your uh, stock handling skills, which is a big part, you know, experience and training of the operator, and the stockyards won't do everything, but your work health and safety and the labour efficiency and animal welfare and all those sort of things we, we sort of know about. Probably one thing just to touch on, I mean, work health and safety, we all sort of say that all the time, but I get the sort of feeling in agriculture that that we sort of hide behind a bit of a cloak of, oh, it's too expensive to, to sort of build new facilities or or we might be sort of relying on on the different authorities not knowing that we've got bad facilities and if someone gets hurt, you know, on a farm, it's sort of, you know, it's, sort of, it's, it's not totally unexpected. I just know that if someone gets hurt at work, at our work, the police turn up. So it's, it's, um, you know, we talk about it, but it's probably something that's going to come. And they, they, they've got teeth, these authorities. They throw a net over the whole place and they'll let you out one by one until they've got someone. And you probably want to hope that your assets are in somebody else's name. <laughs> so, anyway, so those things for animal welfare, less bruising, less time off feed, less stress. Uh, well, there's some videos working there. So, um, <laughs> designs uh, must consider requirements to keep people safe. Uh, the big thing is trying to eliminate people from stock if you can, because that's where you get cleaned up. Um, yeah, plenty of access um, to get around, stop people from climbing over fences. Improve animal welfare, another one. Um, being, you know, obviously, you don't want things to free of mm -hmm. protrusions and things like that, so all being considered being easy to clean, uh, protect the animals from extremes of um, weather, you know, such as shade or uh, ventilation. Flooring, uh, very important in cattle yards, they hate slipping, and they'll remember that, and um, it stresses them out. Um, you know, feed and water if they're going to be in there for a while. Uniform lighting. Um, here's, uh, yeah, the old, the old um, the cost of um, the cost of production in terms of um, the stress on the animals and what uh, dark cutting meat costs the industry and the producer. You know, everybody knows all that. Cattle yard design. Um, so this is a typical sort of a, just an example, um, sort of a, a narrowish force that you can push the cattle up without getting in. Where they're going into the transition zone there uh, and into the single file race is not heading straight at the crush. So that's just an important thing. You know, you want them running towards the fresh air and the blue sky, whatever at this point. And then by the time they get into the crush, they're already there. Probably just another point is, we would like to put a sliding gate one back from the crush so there's a beast there to either help draw or, or when you open the crush door there's one 
sort of in the magazine already. And you don't have to walk you know, back so far. This is just another example. Uh, that's more of a horseshoe design. Um, this is on a six metre radius. Um, coming back to that flight zone thing, which we talked about earlier, some of our northern clients like a much wider radius because if they're standing in here in a in a narrow radius type of a race, they get too close to the cattle and it sort of stirs them up unnecessarily. So it um, you know, we have to take that into account when you know, designing different yards. This is a uh, I guess a a uh, pull around rotary force yard. Um, so you've got a bloke up here, an operator, pulling that gate around, in and around they go. Again, the mouth of this single file race, or that transition from force to single file race, heading at the, <coughs> heading not at the operator, not at the crush, which they remember. This is um, a bit of an S race, same deal, where, where they're entering the, the, the single file race there, heading out there. The only problem with this, which Simon Matier can probably uh, back me up on is when, when the cattle are coming around this corner, this beast here, if someone's standing here, is heading directly at the operator, and that's where we're finding a bit of balking going on. Um, we'll see if this video goes. Yeah, so this is, on a, this is on a farm on King Island, so you can see he's got his sliding gates set up so that uh, ready, open, and the cattle will just all file around um, and fill up the race without any effort. This is a single sort of operation type place. You'll notice that this is a, uh, an overhanging rail, so that, that top rail is suspended from the other side. So on King Island they're, they're missing quite a few trace elements, so they're doing a lot of needling up and down the race. Um, so you don't have that sort of post to go around if you're, if you're trying to jab them. Uh, compression ratio, so going from one size yard to the next. Uh, good rule of thumb, not to go any more than uh, 4 to 1. So if you're in a 320 square metre yard, down to an 80, down to a 20. Just, um, uh, you know, just so you can handle them. Entering cattle yards, I know it's probably, you know, not something you think about every day, but if you're building yards, it is. Um, there's two examples here. There's the uh, one where they're entering here, and there's one where they're entering here. So we're saying, right, um, you know, that's the bad way, and that's the preferred way. Why? Because this one's heading straight at this crush, and straight at the sort of bit of the sea of steel, Whereas this one, he's sort of running straight through to the paddock, you know, straight through. You'll even probably find that they'll yard better if you go around the top and back down that way because they're sort of running back towards home. Um, right, uh, case studies. This is a, a, I guess, a traditional traditional sort of set of yards that we measured up for a client that's having problems pushing them up. Um, He's got this sort of round yard that he used to draft here. He's got this funny little sort of funnel neck thing to his, to his um, single file race crush ramp. So the, part of the problem was that, that they just keep milling, milling, milling and, and not wanting to go up here. But also the other part of the problem is that the cattle get used to um, starting here and then being drafted into these two yards. So. So when he does want to go and use his single file race, well, they think the exits, are, you know, going to go out of these two. So what we did, um, you can see, we stripped out most of the race and crush, and just got that sort of circular thing going where he can sort of draft another couple of ways. He's not running that, you know, the cattle aren't running at anything sort of really threatening when they're sort of going with a single file race, a bigger force where he can actually sort of put a bit of pressure on them. Um, another one, just quickly, um, again, a sort of a triangle type setup. You, you can see they've got the funnel sort of thing, no real leading edge to be able to sort of work them, and they get a bit of turning here. Same 
with this sort of forcing yard going to the ramp, um, no manway, so the poor operator has to, you know, jump over the fence or I suppose go through that gate. But this was quite a big yard to get into there. <coughs> and this is um, what the solution we came up with, you know, just getting them uh, running, you know, away, away into the blue sky, into the single file race, and then be able to draft a few different ways there. Um, the truck gravel and stuff was uh, in place, so we kept the ramp in that general direction. Uh, just some other little tidbits, I suppose. Uh, approaching cattle yards with a truck. If you've got the choice, do you go, um, you go clockwise or anti-clockwise? Well, we're saying you go anti-clockwise. Why? Because your old mate Scotty's He's, uh, he can see the ramp in his driver's side mirror, you know, all the time. Whereas this one, you can't. You know, he has to go all the way straight before he can sort of see it, especially in the big truck. Uh, different types of entries into single file races. Um, we're saying well, this one's not bad, it's got that sort of leading edge. We're saying this funnel system's no good. We're saying this right angle corner's no good with a bruise point there. We're saying a bit of a bugle system, although that's a bit, a bit out of whack, but we're saying that's all right, and this one obviously not. Bud box, um, anyone heard of the bud box before? Yeah, it's an American sort of, sort of thing. I'll, I'll just quickly explain the theory. So this is the single file race here. This is the mob of cattle, not just one, but you, you know, you send up a few and they'll so you go up here, up they go, you close the gate, the X is um, the operator, and then the cattle hit the dead end, want to escape because that's where they, you know, that's, they've hit the dead end and they know that's where they came <coughs> in and that's where probably they're going to get out. So then they make the beast turn around and go down the single file race. Anyway, that's the theory and it does work in practice but I'm not a fan. Um, that is, a, a, again, another sort of a American design using that bud box type theory, lane, shut the gate and then um, they've got a dual sort of lead up race, which we don't do so much with cattle, but it, it's got merit, I, I think we certainly do it in a few sort of sheep type handling facilities where they're sort of next to their mate and they're sort of in a community a bit, so they're, they're a bit more relaxed. Um, distractions, um, I suppose just think about your own yards at home, um, shadows, rubbish, trench drums, uh, preg testing sleeves or whatever that's just, you know, flying around the place that doesn't take very long to clean up, but it could be having a real, real uh, impact on, on the way things are flowing. Um, so yeah, they're just saying, that, you know, they can ruin a well-designed facility just, um, yeah, by these little things. Distraction, you know, this is a, 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 an unloading dump, but, you know, why not tidy up the pallet? Why not sort of tidy up the bailing twine? All of these things which we've sort of learned, you know, the way they cattle see the world is, is you know, it's not a pallet to them. It's, you know, it's something a bit, a bit scarier. Um, this is a... A picture I took at an abattoir. Um, it was more just so I could remember what was there, but then I sort of started looking at it and I could see the problems. Now, this abattoir is getting, I wouldn't say hundreds a day, but hundreds a week, uh, cattle a week going going up this. That's the knock box. And here we have this sort of gate that's protruding out, which has been, cattle have been running into that for the last 50 years. and. <coughs> you know, five metres before the, they go and get their heads cut off. Uh, other things to sort of look at here, there's a chain there. So a beast goes past it, this chain's waving, you know, as it rocks backwards and forwards. The beast following it just go, you know, what's going on there? Just that sudden movement sort of freaking me out. It's also the, um, the floor is like a skating rink there. It's been washed up there but it was very slippery and you could see where the ruck marks had sort of where cattle had been slipping where they were forced into this um, into this box. There's also 
oh well, you know, tidy up the hoses, that sort of caper. But this was at the end of a sort of a lane, a straight sort of lane. So they'd been you know, running directly at this um, knockbox, um, you know, guillotine gate going up and down, and the operator sort of up on stairs. So the cattle have been watching this going on for the last 20 or 30 metres, and um, you know, there's better ways of doing it. Mm -hmm. Distractions, you know, think about where you park your ute. Um, <coughs> Um, you know, it's, it's pretty easy to just drive up next to the crush and pull the handbrake on, but, you know, just think about putting it somewhere else. Um, plan for current and new technologies. Um, this is, oh, you know, just depends how much money you want to spend, but <laughs> it's all going. I think a lot of the, the basic stuff of weighing, Knowing what you've got, and um, and being able to handle handle them, you know, cattle in a timely fashion is you know, what it's about. You know, um, rotary force yards. We know that gate follows them around and keeps the pressure on to those sort of beasts that um, that don't want to go up. But if it's as we said before, if it's Designed properly, then you shouldn't have to push that gate around all the time. Um, the different sort of types of rotary forces there: some concrete, some steel. Um, but this is an American um, plant, processing plant. They've got a forcing yard here with a very long single file race. To my way of thinking, they would have been better off to have this rotary force in this corner. So instead of having this single file race for the transition running straight at the big building there it would have been better off to have them in a lane where you can move them more volume of cattle from A to B faster in a lane than you can in single file and then have the entrance to the single file race you know, headed back towards you know, the openness I think sometimes you can have a single file race that's too long uh, Quickly, when this is some loading facilities, but just showing you a little bit about you know sheeting and getting rid of the distractions and cattle wanting to escape. So they've gone, you know, up that sort of loading ramp without any sort of real pressure at all. Just sort of up they go. And here comes the truckies behind a bit. <laughs> Goes through the motions. But by the time he's pulled that force around, it like they're already gone. Um, yeah, right. That's enough of that one. So uh, controlling light, um, cattle will gravitate from darker areas to lighter areas, but not into blinding light. So not into spotlights or headlights or even the sun, for that matter. Um, we know about the shadows and what that does. They don't know if it's a hole or if they're going to trip on it because of the way they see the world. Um, if you're going to, to put a cover over something, don't let the shadow be right at that sliding gate or the transition zone. Um, with unloading and loading or all that sort of thing, uh, truckies never have a problem with unloading to the south. Um, because they're, ne they're never sort of walking directly into the sun. So if you've got the choice south, then north, then take your pick east or west. Um, obviously, you know, we've talked about that again. Controlling noise. Um, noise freaks the cattle out and they get stressed and it makes them harder to, to, uh, to handle. So just think about what's making noise. Put motors further away, pipe air, you know, if the exhaust for pneumatics, pipe it away, all that sort of thing. Remove the steel yards, it's very hard to make them dead quiet, but um, you've got to think about these things. Um, the operator's making noise. I mean, all you really need to do is make enough noise so the animal knows you're there. You sort of see it time and time again that, um, I guess, inexperienced operators just don't think they're working unless they're making a noise. But it's, it's, 
it's um, not needed. Loading ramps. Um, again, the steps are a good idea, certainly when unloading. Um, it again, comes back to that slipping and being short-footed. Um, also, a sliding gate at the very at the truck end is um, becoming well. It, one day it'll probably be compulsory, but it just allows a sliding gate on the ramp. You can shut, especially when you're loading and unloading. If there's a flap to put over, um, sort of allows the the truckie to shut that sliding gate on the on the ramp. Then you can retrieve the flap if there is one, or shut the shut the back of the back of the truck without fear of um, getting trampled on. Blah 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 blah. blah. Concrete um, again, slipping. Use it use it to your advantage. Obviously, it doesn't want to be the cattle don't want to slip, and also mount it up around your post so it doesn't doesn't um, water doesn't stay there. Um, elevated walkways again, just separating um, man, man from beast. Covers, obviously it's a nicer environment to work in out of, out of, um, out of the elements and also sort of keeps, especially during winter, you know, makes it less boggy if they're not concreted. Uh, different materials, obviously the wider the the wider the plank or the rail, then the more surface area, area there is um, if they get pressed up against it in terms of not being um, yeah, getting bruised. Remember, poor man pays twice. So it costs the same amount to build a poorly designed facility as it does to build a, a well-designed facility. The well-designed facility will have lower labour requirements Minimise work health and safety issues and injuries, result in less bruising and stress on livestock, and uh, it'll also increase your productivity and uh, profitability. Spend a lot of good to say, Steve. Thank you, buddy.